Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression. A numerical expression, but we're going to try to find the simplest value, the simplest form of this. Now, I announced this you know, a while ago. We had another video two hours ago, and before that we had the premiere. Anyways, today we have three videos, two of which are trigonometric. And the first one is also kind of trigonometric. If you haven't seen it, take a look because it's very interesting. I for interesting. Okay, great. So let's see how we can simplify this. First of all, I'm thinking about this like, do I know the value of sine 10 degrees? You could also write it as pi over 18. It wouldn't matter too much. I just like the degrees better. And guess what? I'm not going to write the degree symbol all the time. Please understand that it's understood. Okay, hopefully you do because I, I don't like writing it. I'm hoping that it's understood. Anyway, sine pi over 18 is the same as sine 10 degrees. Do we know the values? Well, you can find the value of sine 60, or you do know it, and then can you cut it in thirds? Probably, and we can find sine 20, and then using the double angle, hopefully we can find sine 10 and cosine 10. Even if you find it, I don't think those values are going to be nice. That could be the first or second method. I don't know, maybe let me know in the comment section down below if you have an easy way of finding it. And if there is an easy way of finding it, or if there's a way of finding it, I'll probably make a separate video on finding sine 10 degrees or cosine 10 degrees. Because I think it's, it'll be interesting if there's a way to do it. Anyways, let's go ahead and proceed with our problem. So my idea is to find the value of this expression in the simplest form without finding the values of sine 10 degrees and cosine 10 degrees. That is the fun part of this solution, in my opinion. Okay, anyways, hopefully this gave you some background. Um, forgive me if I talk too much, because I do. Let's start by making a common denominator. Doesn't that make sense? Well, it kind of does. Cosine 10 minus square root of 3 sine 10. Again, did I tell you I'm not going to write the degree symbol, but I'm hoping that it's understood every time from now on. All right? So 10 means 10 degrees. So this expression doesn't look very friendly, while the bottom kind of looks friendly. Because if you think about sine of 2x, right? Sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. You should know this, right? This expression comes up a lot, especially if you're given sine x plus cosine x or sine x minus cosine x. One of the things that we always want to do is square it to get 2 sine x cosine x, because that's equal to the double angle for sine. Make sense? So anytime you see sine x plus minus cosine x, square it, you're not going to go wrong. So, but how can I use it here? So the bottom is kind of taken care of with double angles. But what about the top? The top actually uses an interesting strategy that we just used two hours ago to solve the interesting trigonometric equation, which was Cosine of cosine x equals sine of sine x. Take a look at it if you haven't done so yet, and then let me know what you think. But we're going to use the same strategy one more time. And that is to simplify this expression. Let's go ahead and isolate it, tear it apart. And now I'm going to replace square root of 3 with tangent of 60 degrees, which is tangent pi over 3. Why am I doing that, right? Why would you replace a number by the tangent of something? Because I want to write the tangent as sine over cosine. There's an identity, right? And then turn this into a difference or sum, because that's what's going to happen. So let's make a common denominator. And that's going to give us cosine of 10 times cosine of pi over 3 minus sine of pi over 3. Well, actually, I could probably write the pi over 3 first. So that looks a little better, in my opinion, because pi over 3 is greater than 10. So I want to write that first. Again, just part of the OCD that I have. Forgive me for that. And now we get the following. And of course, I have to divide because it's not an expression. I'm not multiplying both sides by something. I'm just making a common denominator. Make sense? I hope it does. Now, what does the top or the numerator remind you? What is the numerator? Doesn't that look like cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta? And if you said cosine of alpha plus beta for this, you're totally right about that. Yes, that's what it is, the sum formula for cosine. 
You should memorize these if you're doing trigonometry. They're not too hard. There's only, there was a book, I think, or some type of joke. Math is easy. You just have to memorize 1,579 formulas. That's a lot, right? But yeah, some people do memorize a lot of formulas. I probably ended up memorizing quite a few. But anyways, they're helpful. So the top from here is going to become the following. Cosine of pi over 3 plus 10. And that's kind of weird, right? Let's put the degree symbol. Should we? No. It's understood, right? And then it's going to be divided by that. Cosine pi over 3, we know what it is. It's cosine of 60, which is sine of 30, which is 1 half. Awesome. So this brings out a 1 half or a 2 in the front. But what about this one? This is 60 degrees. That's 10 degrees. The total is 70. So I'm getting the following. 2 cosine 70 degrees. Okay, fine. I'm going to write the degree symbol once. Okay, that is the numerator. What about the denominator? I don't know. Let's find out. 2 cosine 70 degrees divided by, what was at the bottom? Sine 10, cosine 10, right? Now, those are in degrees, by the way. Remember that? So let's go ahead and get rid of this degree symbol because it looks weird. It's hopefully understood, right? Now, can I simplify this or am I going to leave it like this? Yes, you can simplify it. Remember what I said about the double angle. Multiply the top and the bottom by 2. And now the bottom is sine 20. The top is 4 cosine 70. And the bottom is sine 20. Why? Because of the double angle formula. Remember we talked about it, right? What did we say? We said, hey, sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. I didn't have 2 sine x cosine x, but I had sine x cosine x, so I had to multiply by 2. You could also write it as follows. You could just replace sine 10 cosine 10 with sine 20 divided by 2. But that will bring a 1 half. You would have to move it, so on and so forth. Guess what? It turns out to be the exact same thing. So it doesn't matter. Just multiply and don't deal with fractions because fractions can be very, very annoying. Okay, I hope you agree with me on that. But anyways, this is what the answer that we got. Now, remember, we had a discussion about do we know the numerical values of sine 10 and cosine 10? Please let me know if you know of a way to evaluate those. I think there is a way to do it, but I'm not exactly sure at this point. I'm thinking about uh, one third of 30 degrees, and you could probably go with the cubic formula. Oh, man, that's probably going to be very painful. Anyways, so how do I simplify this? Okay, great. Remember in the video that we did again two hours ago, we talked about two angles that are complementary. And what did we say? We said that, hey, if two angles are complementary, then one of the sines equals to the other cosine. So in other words, sine alpha is the same thing as cosine of pi over 2 minus alpha. In other words, sine 20 is the same as cosine 70 because these two are complementary. Guess what? That's exactly what we have. So these values are equal. They cancel out. And the answer is 4. Wow, that's so simple. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.